Am I the a-hole for kicking my friend out after she said I was treating my dog like a servant? I, female 27, recently moved into my new house. I have a golden retriever named Nala, and she's the sweetest. I'm deaf too, and that bit is important. When I moved in, I had a bit of trouble having flashing light doorbells put in, and there was a while I had to go without. My friends and family know to give me a call when they drop by, instead of ringing the doorbell, but unfortunately I have missed many a package this way. For some reason, Nala caught onto this. At one point she began letting me know when someone was at the door. She'd do this in multiple ways. If I was in the living room where I can see the front door, she'd go and paw at the door. Or if I was upstairs, she'd come and gently headbutt me to let me know someone's there. It took me a while to catch on to what she was trying to do though. And now, even though I have my doorbell installed, she still does it. I did not teach her how to do any of this. She just decided to help me out, lol. Recently, I brought a friend over for the first time. This is the first time she's met Nala as well. The first thing she comments on is how I named her Nala, because apparently everyone and their grandma names their golden Nala. Well, Lion King was my favorite movie growing up, sue me. Then I showed her a video of Nala pawing at the door because it got a bit awkward after that comment. It's usually a great icebreaker. She laughed and thought it was cute. I showed her another one and she asked me why Nala was doing that and I explained. She doesn't say anything for a minute and then goes, So she's basically your servant? Is she just here to get the door? I was thoroughly done with her judgmental butt by that point and I just asked her to leave. She left but she did message me afterwards saying I was rude AF for kicking her out after she traveled all the way to see me and that how else was she supposed to think of my dog with videos like that? Now for the top comments. Not the a-hole. Maybe you should get Nala to show your friend the door. Yes, not the a-hole. Opie sounds like a great dog owner. The friend is the one that is not knowledgeable about dogs. And it was right to ask her to leave for how they were acting. Not the a-hole. Nala sounds like a wonderful dog. So smart. And you sound like an excellent dog parent. Clearly your friend doesn't know anything about dogs, particularly golden retrievers, who thrive in having jobs to do. Good for you for asking your friend to leave after her rude and judgmental comments. That was my first thought too. She clearly doesn't understand dog psychology. For my interpretation, sounds like the friend needs to learn that not every thought or opinion needs to be voiced. Think my choice of dog name is overrated or cheesy? Fine, but keep it to yourself. Not the hole. How else is she supposed to think? How about think that this dog is more than a dog? Somehow, this dog realized that its owner had a disability and found a way to help with that. Out of love. This is actually one of the most beautiful things I've ever heard. Your friend trying to turn it into some sort of animal exploitation story is twisted and awful. It speaks volumes that she would immediately go there, as opposed to seeing the sweet animal as anything other than a caring friend. Actually kind of gross. Many dogs love having jobs and interacting with their owners. Other animals do too. I tend to notice that some people who don't have animals in their lives often don't understand that animals not only like doing stuff for, slash with, slash alongside humans, animal even seek humans out. They just jump to cruelty, animal mistreatment, slavery, immediately without evidence. Next story. Am I the a-hole for telling her I'd never choose her over my dog? I got a dog two years ago. She's a perfect corgi mix. Super loving and is always happy to see me. But she has issues that my fiancé of six years has never been able to get over, such as resource guarding and anxiety. My dog whines more often than not. Like if I leave the room, she whines. If I walk out to leave, she will bolt out at a door going 110 miles per hour and whine at the car door because she doesn't want me to leave without her. She never bonded with my fiancé. She absolutely tried, but my dog never cared to be blunt. She is a one-person dog, and I'm her person. Now, the issue is that my fiancé recently found out that she's pregnant. We were told this was impossible and had planned our life out not involving children because we were seriously told by numerous doctors that she could not conceive. She's absolutely terrified. Well, I'm completely indifferent because I was on defense about kids anyways. And then I was told she couldn't have any, so I was expecting a kid-free life and was fine with it. I mean, we are freaking 30 already. But regardless, there is a piece of me that is stupid excited. So I'm sure my mind will eventually be full on excited versus kind of put off. The issue is that my wife doesn't want my dog around a baby because of the dog's resource guarding. 
There are some days where my fiancé can't even get close to me without my dog losing her mind. And she does nip, hurting Mix. Not hard, but still nips. Yes, she's been in and out of training. She's also in meds for anxiety. Nothing has helped, but if anything, she has regressed. So she doesn't want the dog around our baby. A part of me understands, but a much, much bigger part of me is completely unwilling to let go of my dog, who my fiancé doesn't like anyways. It almost feels like she thinks this is her excuse to get rid of my dog. So anyways, we got into a heated argument about it and I finally snapped and said, I would never freaking choose you over my dog. And I left. Stayed at a hotel for a few days and we didn't speak. I came back today with my dog and she won't even look at me. The second me or the dog walk anywhere near her, she makes a point to walk in the opposite direction. My friends are on my side, but I want unbiased feedback. You're the a-hole. Wow, man. Your fiancé was in your life before the dog was. And in theory, it will be after the dog is ashes and dust. The dog is poorly trained and likely to be unsafe around children. And you're choosing the dog over your future wife? W-T-F. You'd almost have a point if the dog was in your life first. But like, there is zero chance I'm staying with someone who tells me that they'd take our new pet over me. No, it is not relevant whether the dog was there first. If you have a dog that resource guards to the point where the fiancé risks getting bit by going near him, you get rid of the dog before the baby comes. End of story. You're the a-hole. This is coming from someone who really dislikes babies. Your dog guarding you from your wife will quickly turn into your dog guarding you from your child. Think about how that will make your child feel. Terrified that a dog who nips their heels will keep them away from their father. That will hamper your relationship with your child. You made your stance clear, though. I hope she's either preparing to become a single mother or calling the nearest abortion clinic. You won't be an equal parent, as you're unable to think about the child's needs. Does anyone else get the sense that Opie is likely foster discarding behavior? All the training in the world doesn't mean anything if it's not consistently followed through at home. And Opie seems like he enjoys being his dog's only person. You're the a-hole. All around a post hurt my stomach. As someone who just got engaged, if my fiancé said anything like this to me, I'd not only be crushed, but I'd consider this the end of the relationship. You're the a-hole. Why are you with someone you clearly don't even like at a basic level? Your dog will attack your child if you don't do something. What the actual heck is wrong with you? That you don't care that your dog might off your kid. My dog is not going to off the kid. That's dramatic. Dogs have offed children all the time. And yes, yes, the dog can. You aren't taking this seriously. You rather lose fiancé and a child over a dog. Listen, I love my dogs, and I will put myself at risk for them, but never a child. Next story. Am I the a-hole for telling my husband and in-laws that our children do not need to attend their older sister's housewarming party? My husband and I have three biological children together. He adopted my child from a prior relationship, and I am a stepmother to his adult child. My husband was divorced from my stepdaughter's mom. She was eight when my husband and I became serious, and my son was still a baby. Not long after my stepdaughter's mom died, my husband and I had talked about marrying before she died, and we delayed it for a couple of years to allow my stepdaughter time to grieve and adjust to the changes in her life. This was with the help of therapy, of course, as we knew a child who lost someone so close would need extra help. Now my stepdaughter is 20, my son is 12, and our children together are 7, 6, and 4. So what happened here is my stepdaughter and her boyfriend recently moved into a house together. She asked for help setting up their dining room, and we all went over to help her. Her house was covered in photos. The landing had them, living room, kitchen, etc. There was not a single photo of her siblings in the house, or me. But it was not seeing one of the kids that led to this. She had her parents, grandparents, aunts and uncles, her cousins, and friends. But there was no sign of the kids anywhere. All of the photos with her dad were older ones from before we met. My 12-year-old, 7- and 6-year-olds noticed too, because they were excited to look around her house. I also couldn't help but notice, because her boyfriend had so many of his siblings, and because there were some of what felt like deliberate choices, to make sure she used photos that didn't contain her siblings including extended family photos from years ago with my husband's side that were taken before her dad and I met. And we know she has photos with her siblings. I always knew she wasn't super crazy about her siblings. 
I always hoped as she got older she would feel love for them, but it feels like she doesn't think of them as family or as special enough to be included. The three kids who noticed were hurt. My husband tried to assure them it was likely an oversight on her part, and he called her the next day to ask, and she said she had only wanted photos with people she considered family, and she didn't consider us family. We were all invited to her housewarming party, but the kids did not want to go. My husband and in-laws were shocked and said they had to go, of course. I argued that they didn't, and I told him I would stay home with them. They argued back to me that the kids needed to be. I said that they did not need to be there, and I wouldn't force them to go when they already feel hurt. My husband and in-laws think I'm unreasonable. Am I the a-hole? Now for the top comments. Not the a-hole. Your stepdaughter likely doesn't even want them there. She flat out stated that she doesn't consider them family. I'm sure that's not what your husband wants to hear, but you can't force a relationship. Yeah, I feel like this is an invitation out of obligation, and she's expecting them to refuse to attend due to what happened. Either that or it's a gift grab. Either way, Opie's not the a-hole. Stepdaughter can put up whatever pictures she wants in her house, but her manner of explaining it was rude as heck. It being a gift grab makes no sense. Since her dad is still going, she's getting the same amount of presents if her stepmom and half-siblings go or not. Agreed. Likely she is just being polite so her dad will come. Not day whole. She clearly told him she doesn't consider the kids family. She's not changing her mind. Making it so the kids are optional, rather than forcing them together at the expense of the younger kids, is going to be better for everyone's relationships. Not day whole. But to be very clear, this isn't a judgment on your stepdaughter's decisions regarding her photos, but it's a judgment on your choice to stay home with your children. They should not have to go be subjected to her overt display of her feelings to exclude them from her definition of family. No one should have to be subjected to that. The little ones have the right to make their decisions just as she has. Last story. Am I the a-hole for telling my future sister-in-law that I don't have time to be her maid of honor? I, 25 female, have been married to my husband, 29 male, for a few years now. He has a younger brother who recently got engaged. I have known his brother's girlfriend for four years, but we're not extremely close, though we hang out whenever there's a family get-together. Anyways, for a bridal party, she asked me to be the maid of honor. She has four other bridesmaids, composed of cousins and old school friends. I told her that I'm very grateful that she has asked me, but unfortunately, I don't have the time to do all the things expected of a maid of honor. I just had my first baby in November, and it's a lot, and she has expressed wanting a bridal shower, bachelorette party, etc., I told her I can just be a regular bridesmaid. She seemed fine, but afterwards, my husband told me that she was venting to my brother and telling him that I'm being cold to her. According to her, she thinks I'm lying by saying I'm too busy because I'm on maternity leave and that I have all the time in the world while all her other friends work full-time. My husband agrees with me, but his brother called me said I should try to be accommodating to her. I reconsidered, and I told her that I would be her maid of honor if she covers half of the responsibilities, like planning the bachelorette party. He said it would get back to me. The next day, she calls me and asks me why I'm being so difficult. She says I'm the only one at a bridal party not working, and that I should step up. I told her again that I'm on maternity leave taking care of a baby, and it is actually even more demanding than full-time work. She ended a call quite upset. Am I the a-hole for not being accommodating enough? 1. Maternity leave is not a vacation, and she's delusional to think it is. 2. Even if you were on vacation, why would you give up your free time to run errands for her? She's entirely too entitled. 3. She's asked someone she's not even close to to be her maid of honor, based strictly on perceived availability. She's either clueless or friendless, but probably both. I hate that people pick bridesmaids and maid of honors just to make them work and plan everything extra and pay all this extra. My mom and sister ran my bridal shower, so my mom paid. Even still, it wasn't that fancy. My bachelorette was karaoke and dancing and getting manicures. Everyone able to make it paid for themselves. Karaoke was at a Chili's level restaurant. A couple of them helped me dress up, but only if they were available and interested. One of my closest friend only did stuff on the wedding day because the rest gave her anxiety. These people are celebrating with you, but also doing you a favor. The wedding alone is enough obligation. Not the a-hole. I hate when people treat maternity leave like a vacation. This is what happens in a society that doesn't appreciate parenthood. Exactly. Not the a-hole. 
I'm a guy who took a few weeks off after each birth of my children. In those weeks, I would do everything except the feeding. That is hard work, though very satisfying. That, combined with lack of sleep, and for a mom, also a body that went through a lot, it's hard. And I don't envy the new moms. Not day whole. If I was you, I would post a question of why she is being so insistent. As you said, you are cordial at family gatherings but you aren't exactly besties. And a maid of honor needs to be someone that not only has the time to be invested in the wedding, but someone that is invested in the bride as well, as the entire point of the maid of honor is to make everything as smooth for the bride as possible. Was she your maid of honor or something? I just can't wrap my mind in why she would want someone that has a cordial relationship with to fill such a big role. She started dating my husband's brother after I got married, so she didn't play a role in my wedding. I think she asked me to be maid of honor for two reasons. One, I'm on maternity leave, and two, my husband and I probably earn a bit more than her other friends, so we can contribute more financially to her bridal events. 